Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract, and we're in our second to last tutorial of the 30 anyway. Who knows if we'll make more after that, but the plan is to go to 30 to start. Um, so we got a bit of a hodgepodge to deal with. One is I would like to show you one of the more complex parts of Zim. So let's go take a look and see what that is. Uh, here's the Zim site at zimjs.com. So far, we've been only inside the fit mode for the most part, as in our, our, our stage is fitting the window as we move that about. We can see that in our code section. There's our template, by the way. That is a template for a fit, as it says right there, fit. Um, but there's more. And if we go more, you'll see that there's different ways. We can put them right into HTML uh, in two different ways. That's a tag mode. We can fit that's what we've been doing. We can fill it so that um, makes sure that the stage fills our window. And then there's the full. So full is a system where you can change the browser window size. Let me just um, let's see what's the best way to do this. <laughs> I don't want to do a desktop reveal. There we go. Oh, I just dropped it back on. OK, so here we go. As we change the browser um, window, Note that it's all yellow. So this whole thing that we're seeing, all this yellow is the stage. And it's always uh, on the stage. And what we're doing is when the stage resizes, we're resizing our button here and repositioning it into the middle. OK, so that's called the, uh, the full mode. And it's best for mobile because then if somebody loads it on a device that looks like that, we have all this stage to work with. If we're in the fit mode, oh, you know, not so good. Obviously, we could change the stage to be more vertical, but then if they happen to change to horizontal, it wouldn't fit. Like this one fits a bit better in horizontal, but still, this stuff we can't use. Whereas if we're in the full mode, right there, full mode, we can use it. All right, so. Uh, we want to go to the full mode, and in the full mode, we have a class called Layout, which we can use. Let's go see if I can find a layout example. So here's Zim. We'll go under Examples. Mm. Let's see. Where's the latest? The latest in Layout happened in ZimCat. So let's go to the Collections. And under ZimCat right here, uh, this is the layout right there. So this is an example of the latest that we did for layout where we're doing adaptive design. It's actually changing layouts as we go there. We have some things around the bottom. We have this content in the middle. And then this goes side by side. So that's something that the layout class couldn't do is it couldn't lay out both horizontal and vertical and stretch them. So we added that in ZimCat, the ability to do that uh, by making containers um, resizable in the layout. Uh, so uh, it's through a page, I guess it is. Yeah, anyway. Uh, also, we've got on the banner up there, that is also in the layout class and doing some fancy things to uh, lay out these regions. So if I hit the B key, we can see that the, re the regions that are happening there and how they're stretching or not stretching. Okay, so that's the bounds key. Whee, that was fun. Okay. So as you can imagine, that gets a little bit tricky to, to lay out all of that stuff. And then I'll hit the B key again, and there you are in theory gone. <laughs> okay, so that's the layout. And there's other examples too that maybe are, are more simple than, than that layout class. Let's see, such as in the Zim bits, we do a layout. So that's the basic uh, layout in the Zim bits. You can have a look at it there. Um, then there was the original when we first made that. It's right here, the original pages guide. So we'll go through this one too. This is also layout and it's, res it's adaptive. So it's responsive and it's scaling, but it's also adaptive changing to a vertical uh, layout. 
So that's two different pages. So we've got, this is using the pages class as well. And one pages class does horizontal, one pages, or one pages object, sorry, does horizontal, one pages object does vertical. And we swap between them based on the orientation, which we can get as an event on the frame. Then there's the swiping. So that, that delay was put in there on purpose. That delay wasn't, I just missed the swipe. So this delay right there is just, it's on purpose. It was just to show you a waiter, how you could wait between them. So this is the layout itself. And then if we swipe one more, hit this thing, it goes to talk about the grid. And this one talks about the guide. So there's grids and guides that will help you with your layout and stuff. And we've come back. There's the grid. The grid also tells you more information going down here. So in other words, the layout is handling all of this, or in the swipe, the pages is handling all of the swiping and going not only horizontal, but also vertical. Pretty amazing, huh? So uh, this isn't really an easy example either to look into, though. It, it really displays the uh, almost the maximum that we can do with layout and pages. Um, sort of the ultimate holy grail of um, adaptive responsive design. And all of this stuff is very similar to what Adobe Flex was doing. And then uh, Flex eventually became the Flexbox, probably. It's the same kind of code. And indeed, that's what we coded here. It's one of the most complicated things that you can code all of this uh, different regions expanding and collapsing and bumping into each other and getting smaller and bigger. And, uh, you know, we initially had only three regions. Then we made it any number of regions. So that was quite the coding experience. All right. So I mentioned we've got a bit of a hodgepodge because we've only got two left. And I want to end with a, a, a really cool one that we can play around with. Uh, but before we end, I also wanted to show you some more components. So why not lay out the components in the layout class? Does that sound good? Okay. And in all of that, we also have to go into the full mode in Flash or in Adobe Animate. So there is um, inside, I go open, I opened it recently, but it's inside the Zim Shim. Maybe I can find it open in the zim shim that's the zip file that we get there's a full folder and in there is a full .fla that shows when i go control enter the same zim example as we had before but in full mode where we 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 didn't bring that one in but we've got the button here and the slider are kind of anchored to the sides as we rescale uh, or resize. We didn't play with this content at all. We just left that in the full mode, right? But these things still work. And so that's the, the prime example in Zim Shim, but done in a full window layout with some scaling. It doesn't have, it doesn't have the layout class though. All right, so we can use that to help us um, understand how to do the layout. We sort of, uh, the way that we've arranged it is if we go F9 here, boom, F9. There's some ex ex explanation there of it. But what we do is, um, if we're inside of another function here, this, we lose this being the reference to the stage that we want. Um, so. We're storing the stage, that's our stage movie clip in a sense, it's not the stage, but the movie clip that's on the stage in this. Uh, if, you, if you take a look at the, uh, this, there's something on the stage right there, that, that pink circle is a movie clip on the stage. So we don't wanna lose a reference to it. So then we say stage.canvas.parent element. So this is um, the stage's canvas. Oh, sorry, we're going to, turn it off, we're gonna display none. So that's where it's holding the old stage. When we use Zim Shim, it uh, gets rid of the CreateJS stage, makes a Zim stage in the Zim Shim. So rather than adjust the Zim Shim directly for it, uh, we just take away the Zim stage by doing that. Okay, but it's a couple steps process. We make a new frame, which has no, so this is a Zim frame right here. And usually we pass in the fit mode, but here we've got no mode showing. So that means uh, by default, it will load in full. So that gives us a full frame stage. 
And when that frame is ready, we call this stuff. We So that's all what was in the old one, okay? Or as in, that's uh, what was in the other uh, Zim Shim FLA uh, code, okay? But now that we have a new frame, the very first frame is the default frame. It's So if you center, uh, remember how we centered things or locate things? I don't see a center. <laughs> Darn, no center. But anyway, there we are posing things. That will position, unless we say which which container, uh, that will position by autom automatically on the stage. But it positions on the first stage made by default. Unless you change the default stage, which is this. It changed the frame to a default frame. So this is now the default frame, which means we don't need to keep on saying, please add it to this stage, please add it to this stage. Otherwise, we'd have to say, please add it to this current frame's stage, like that. All right. Um, I think this was, I can't remember what, oh yeah, I, I do know what this is. Let me show you. So first of all, we set our new frame as the default frame. Second, we want to grab anything that was on the old stage and put it on the new stage. So there we are looping through the stage, which is the old stage. We loop through the stage. We, each time we grab an object, oh, I didn't put this to ES6, so that could be done with a, an arrow function. If the object, what are we doing? At the bottom because looping backwards. If, if oh, if there is an object, uh, there's some things that you can loop through on that stage that seem to be, I'm not sure what they are. <laughs> but uh, anyway, they snag, but, but yeah, if, if that thing actually exists and is an object, then please add it at zero. So what we're doing is looping backwards through it. And as we loop backwards, we're because we're removing children. So that's a little bit tricky. Anytime you loop through a container, if you're removing things from that container, loop backwards. You remember that from the hit test one, I think. When we loop through objects, if we hit them and we want to remove them, then uh, loop backwards. Otherwise, the, the loop indexes get mixed up. Okay, because we're changing, we're swapping them, we're pulling them from the old stage that we're looping through, we're pulling them from there and adding them to our stage, um, our new one, this frame's stage, okay? Uh, that pulls them out from the container, so loop backwards. All right, then we say, hey, this stage, now that we're finished with the old stage, this stage is uh, the current frame dot stage, and then we're ready to go, so from now on, the stage, whenever we reference stage, if we do, then that's this frame stage. And anytime we don't reference the stage, then it's um, by default will be this frame stage because we've set the default. So that bit right there and the end of that uh, on ready right there and the full frame, those were the only changes that we made, just this. Well, I guess that, okay to take away our old stage, take everything that was on it, put it on our new stage that is a full stage. <laughs> Yay. So we're going to need to grab that. I'll copy it. Yes. Copy. And we'll remember that we need that ending as well. And now let's make our new file. So file... Uh, well, Close it down. Hopefully the copy stays and get one of these presets. I think there's probably a way I can grab the presets from the file. I just haven't figured it out at the moment and I paste this in here. Okay, and the other thing to do is end our squiggly and round bracket. That is the end of the ready function here. And here, if we want to go to ES6, we can say boop. And we can save this one in Animate Tutorials. And it will be not that one, no, but number 29. Wow. And in here, we will call this one Layout. We're also looking at a full frame. So up here, we can go and say uh, this is Zim-29 Layout and Full frame. Uh, that can be probably a const, I think. And at the bottom, 
think that's it. Okay. So we can do a control enter and see if, oh, but we have to bring in our, our um, H canal. So that's uh, which one? Import new. Ah, right. We're going to add some components and the components all work great. For some reason, the list component, we've noticed if we're using the Adobe Create JS, the list component does this little scroll right at the beginning. And then after that, it works fine. So it's like, what the heck is causing that to scroll? It's like, oh, we just couldn't figure out why it would do that. If you use our version of Create JS, it doesn't do that. So I may as well pull in our local version. It's, it's a minor detail, I suppose, but I don't know. I wouldn't want to make an app really with that. So uh, I'm bringing in our local. So once again, that's at this point, import. And then Zim Shim, we were usually doing Zim Shim right there. But what we're going to do is bring in our local. If we go into local, local has some scripts. There's, well, it won't, okay. I can't do all scripts, but inside of this 1.3.4 is our version of CreateJS. Inside there is Zim. And what we've done is we've moved those into the animate uh, tutorials folder right there. So you've got them there. So when we pull a local, it's grabbing the files from this local scripts directory, which means if you want to load a list, a list is very handy. If you want to load a list from Zim and don't want it to scroll at the beginning, <laughs> which I wouldn't, then you might want to just grab the local Zim Shim. That gives you a create JS inside of the scripts, and then you upload the scripts to your server along with your file. All right, so sorry about that. Not quite, and I just don't know if it's worth Try, trying to dig in to find out why the list is doing it. We tried a little bit and couldn't, couldn't see why it was scrolling, just did not understand it. Doesn't do it with our CreateJS, so we went, ah. All right, so anyway, I'm going into local, um, or into Zim Shim, and then local, and choosing the local, and hitting OK. So let's have a look. Control Enter. And here we have the Zim layout with a big sort of stage. Yay. So all of this is the stage now. And we can um, try out some different things on it. Okay. So we're inside here with our adjustments. And if we say new circle dot center, we'll make it 100 and red. And we're centering it and dot dragging it. Then here's the difference. Uh, now we get a hundred pixel radius circle centered and dragged. But if I change the size of the stage, note that that doesn't change, which means we may end up, hey, where'd the circle go? It's gone. So there's no built in scaling in the full mode. Hence, that's a little bit harder to uh, work with. So what we would have to do is kind of do that scaling when it's dragging. It's, I mean, there's no point really when it's dragging. Who, who, where do we put it? Who knows? So normally, though, in here we would do a frame dot uh, on resize, and we call this arrow function in there. So here's where we need to do any of our scaling. So if we weren't dragging it, we always wanted to keep it center, for instance, then we would go const circle here is equal to that. And in here, we would have to say circle.center again to keep that centered, or however we want that positioned. So now, as we change this, the circle stays centered. Okay, we can't drag it at the moment. If we drag it and, and changed it, uh, or if we dragged it and then changed the stage, it would just push it into the center, which obviously isn't quite what we want, we don't think, anyway. And you can also scale it based on the stage scale as well. So dot ska, for instance, or, um, well, we would should do that before we center it, dot uh, scale to um, the stage. So that's S, and if we go say 20%. Okay, so this is going to scale it 20% of either the height or the width, whichever one is, is limiting. So there's that. And as I scale the stage, you see how it gets bigger and smaller. There's 20% of the height. 
Here's 20% of the width. And so that's how we can do responsive design. And we have code pen articles on handling the responsive design stuff. All right, great. Have a feeling this is going to be a bit of a tutorial. So if you ever want to just stop and go get a cookie, uh, go ahead because the layout class isn't necessarily all that straightforward. It's not too bad, but uh, it can be a little bit tricky. Hopefully my mind's up to it as well. Ah, <laughs> uh, aye, aye, aye. Alrighty, so we wanted to check out some new tutor or some new components. So let's comment out the circle for now and see a, a few of these different components. So one is the list, new list. I may as well store it in a variable. Const list is equal to and dot center. So I should be doing that a lot. So you can pass in a list for the list, obviously. I think that's for, uh, first parameter is probably width and height and then a list. But here is the default list. It's got a bunch of options and note that when we refresh this, it just starts there. <laughs> if we bring in the CreateJS version, or sorry, the Adobe version of CreateJS, this goes tick, 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 and stops there as it starts. And you're going, why did it do that? And then you pick it up. As soon as you just pick it up, it goes twang back in place, and it's all good. <laughs> but it starts off by going tick, tick, tick. And it's like, uh, okay. It's like a ghost, a ghost in the list. Uh, that's, as far as I know, that and gesture, gesture and this list, the last two tutorials actually, have been really the only thing that um, we can't explain. <laughs> uh, there's some other nuances that we showed you in the movie clip time, uh, things being inside of movie clips that are, are timeline movie clip kind of things that we didn't expect. But for the most part, those are understandable. and. Anyway, here that this works in ours. And obviously as we change this, we would get a change event and we'd be able to ask for the text and then we could get that. Maybe we can uh, see that. Oh, may as well look at it now. So uh, we can tap, or sorry, not tap, we can chain on dot change and call this arrow function right here. Or we could have afterwards said list dot on change. Call this arrow function. Okay, so that is the same as us putting a, a change on there. This is chainable. The on is not chainable or shouldn't be changed. Chained, sorry. <laughs> Nothing like talking chain and changed in the same sentences. <laughs> Makes it a little bit tricky. Okay, so we'll just do the chainable change method right on here. And what shall we do with this? Um, why don't we make a label? And we can say value question mark. And we'll dot pose this. Um, hmm. Zero from the center, 100 down from the center, and top is default. So, oh, uh, well, we need to do something about that. Hang on. Um, we still want to. We still want to do something in here. So, when our list changes, we will say label. Dot uh, text is equal to list dot text. That should work, and we might want to stage dot update s dot update. Oh, uh, hopefully s is our stage. I forgot. Um, we're relatively new with this s and f thing. Did we put it in here? And I didn't. Okay, put that right up top. You've seen this before, hopefully. F is the frame. S is the stage. W is the stage width. I'm getting better at typing it. H is the stage height. Okay, and we make sure to comment that out. There we go. So I was going to say, yeah, we're new to that stage thing, but I think S, if we change this to the set the default, I think that turns this frame stage into S. But we are about to try. So here we are, and I choose option two, and it worked. Option three. One thing I noticed, it didn't center, did it? You see how we're 
when we started off, refresh here, it says value, that's centered, but as soon as I choose an option, it's a bit longer off to the right. That's because we didn't center um, the label uh, and it's a line and stuff. So we'll, it takes two things to do that actually. We put the registration of the label uh, to the center and the other thing is we set the, um, we'll set a style, it's probably the easiest, to uh, align colon center. And then we probably want to take that off just in case that style affects other things. So this turns off the style. And that's probably the easiest way to handle that. And now when we hit options two, it's nicely centered there. Once again, all, all of this stuff isn't necessarily centered anymore <laughs> because we can change that. It's not moving. Okay. Yay. So very cool. We've got a list showing up there. And once again, you can add things to the list. You can remove things from the list. And the list can be quite complicated. You might remember in one of the earlier tutorials under examples, we took a look at uh, Gen Pen right here. Well, Gen Pen. And Gen Pen makes extensive uh, use of lists down the side, along with this thing called an organizer. So that's an organizer. If we were to draw something on that, that one and go to this one and draw something different under presets, I put a city group. So now it's switched well with this list. So this is a list. It's not a list of um, just words like we saw. It's a list of these, these square things. It has stuff in it, interactive things in the list. So that all of that is still a list. And this is an organizer. And now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna hit the arrow down and it just moved it down. Or I can move it all the way up to the top by hitting that. Now it's all the way up at the top of the list. Um, and there's the other one at the bottom of the list. So that's the organizer. We can delete things. We can add things to the list. Um, so quite powerful there. All right, there's other examples we have in Zim of you know, dragging things out of a list, putting things in a list. Um, the list can go horizontal or vertical. So uh, lots of stuff to do with that list. Okay, but there's the default list. You can do a pull down as well. So um, maybe just show you an example of a pull down like that. Uh, these are things that you might want to use. I can't remember if CreateJS has those components in it, or not CreateJS, but um, Adobe Animate used to have components uh, like that, but I think they got removed when we're going to the web. Yeah, they probably did, because I don't remember. I don't think there's anything in CreateJS that would have handled them. But uh, Zim uh, can, like Zim's got tons of components and the, some of them are quite complex. So that's what I'm wanting to show you now is some of the more complex components so that you know that you could use those. Let's go under examples and it was, it looks like a bicycle and it's in the code pen ones which are down here. So have a look for, just see more of these at once something that looks kind of like a bicycle and you tell me when you see it. Mm, oh, maybe it didn't look like a bicycle. Tell me when you see something that doesn't quite look like a bicycle. <laughs> I am such a loser, huh? Uh, let's think, what was it that it did look like? I'd probably see it, it's a pull down. Maybe it actually looked like a pull down. Does it help if I could get this to a size that I like. I can't remember what it was called either, but this is nice for you to just, as, as I go through, have a look at these icons and sort of think of all of the things we've made. That's multi-user. You pick up one, the other person picks up another, and if you touch hands, hearts show up. It's, oh, some of these are just fascinating. Um, oh, I know another way we could have found it is through the docs at list pulldowns. But I should be able to spot it in here. I am failing. Whoa. Oh, there it is right there. Pull down menu. If I looked up pull down, probably would have found it. So on the top right here is a pull down. Look, we're expanding these with pluses. 
they could have, so it's kind of like an accordion, um, and that's how we treat it, it's an accordion. Ah, right, I forgot to show you that the list can have accordion. So there we go, and we've also got these things for sensibility and frames per second that relate to spinning this bicycle. And we can swipe the bicycle and animate the bicycle. So there's frames per second, reducing, increasing, reversing, prompt. Okay, so that's a pull down with, or that's a list with a bunch of stuff on it. We're sitting at half the code that somebody had tried to make this in, in HTML. All right, that was that one. But then there's also the list pull down itself. And that was introduced in Zim uh, 10 right here. So here it is right here. So this is the pull uh, a pull down with London, Paris, and Oslo. Oh, we don't want Europe, Canada. Hey, guess where I am? I'm in Ontario, in Hamilton, in Dundas, and there's where I am. So you see what I mean by by the list? It's like, wow, okay, that's a lot. You don't need all those colors. You can do it without the colors. <laughs> so there's, note the indenting on it as you go. You don't have to have the indenting, but you can. These can be little arrows rather than pluses and minuses. And there's our lovely, this is called... Um, uh, Old Ancaster Road, it's got tons of these curves, 32 curves on it, and it only goes a couple miles. Wow. Through a beautiful ravine in, well, as you can see, Canada, Ontario, Hamilton, Dundas. <laughs> All right, so the list is like that. A lot of things the list can do. Great. Well, now uh, that could be content. So why don't we treat these two things as content? And what we'll do is const content is equal to a new container or a page, but container's fine. We'll make it something like, mm, I don't know, 600 by 600. And we will, for now, dot center it on the stage. But a little bit later, we'll let the layout do that for us. I think, yeah. Uh, no, I think we just do an add to. But for now, we're going to center it. And then these things will add to the content. So the label gets positioned. Hmm. Let's drop this down so we, yeah, so we can see it. And hopefully you're doing okay. Like I said, if this is too long for you, go get a cookie. Um, we may as well say that was from the top, just so we can get to the where we're going to position this is inside of content. Although now, uh, what is this, the label? We'll just put it right up at the top of the content, I guess. Okay, does that make sense? So if we're centering the content, it's 600 by 600. Now we're building something in the content. So what we're doing is what we call flexive design. You guys should like that, huh? Flexive design, we called that before Flexbox. Uh, called it after Adobe Flex though. Um, and what that means is we have these regions and we build the regions a to a certain dimension like this. That is easier for us because we can know where, you know, we know how big the region is and we put things in the right places. Then we've got all these regions and the regions are what we scale, okay, in the layout. So uh, that way we can keep our interface sort of all nice and tidy. We can keep our content all nice and tidy and our header nice and tidy and just scale certain parts of it and the insides keep the aspect ratios, all right? So that's uh, what we're up to. And then we've put the label there. Let's put the list there now. The list, I suppose, could center in that region, but maybe we'll position it to the bottom. Pose, uh, zero, comma, zero, comma, center in the X and bottom, and then on the, or in the content. And let's drop this down too, so that we can see all this stuff happening. All right, let's have a look. So 600 by 600 was too big, as you can see. Um, we, when it comes to layout class two, we're able to color these regions. So we want this sort of dramatically smaller. It just depends on the sizes in there. Uh, we don't have any color yet, but if we had a layout, we could start putting it in a background color for this. I'm just gonna leave the background color out, but only make that uh, 400 even. And probably it looks like the width doesn't really need to be that big. So what you most likely want to do is get the region how you want it. If we really want to see what's going on here, just for ease, um, we could go 
a new rectangle and put it however big the content is. So content.width, content.height, and we'll make it pink. Oh, that'll be nice, huh? And dot add to content. But in the end, we can let um, the layout class handle this. So here's, here's what we got. This is the region that we're making. As you can see, uh, it's, not, it's not the nicest thing that we could make. That's right at the bottom, but that, that's okay. Then we use margins. So the layout class has margins, and we use the margins to separate this stuff from the rest. But we definitely want to bring this down lower, and we don't really need this, uh, this width. One thing we could do is make this container uh, have nothing. Then it's a little bit tricky to center it though. Um, and so we also, what happens is as we do things, as we place things, the container changes size. So it makes it hard to build in. For instance, there's the result and we don't know what the heck is going on. It's because it, it put the label in and then when it centered this on the label, it kind of overlapped what was left of the label and the label's kind of sitting in behind this thing. And so it's like, ugh. So usually that's harder to build a bunch of things into a container that is constantly changing shape when we're positioning things at the top and the bottom of that container. It's almost impossible to do. It's like a puzzle. So we'll drop that to 400, um, drop this to 200, and let's uh, go with it. That's not going to quite work. How about 300? I'm just looking briefly over there. It looks like 250. So uh, there's kind of like, yeah, all right, there we go. Okay, that's close enough to our region, and if we change it, that's going to, to update. Okay, I can't tell it. Uh, if that, is that the bottom? It must be the bottom of it. But like I said, we don't need to worry about padding, really. We, we could build the padding into this if we wanted to, but we're going to get margin later. Oh, one thing, yeah, maybe we do want to worry about the padding, because if we're doing background color, it would end up uh, looking like this. So we want to build the padding in. Uh, which would just be don't put it zero at the bottom, put it 20 or 30. So if we put that 30 and this one is 30 from the top, that's like us. Or we could store up here. We could kind of say const padding is equal to 30. I'll make it 20. Okay, and then use the padding here. Use the padding here. We increase the height here. Try back to a 300. See how we're looking. Okay, padding, padding. Um, we, I think we're pretty good. So that's our content region. We might have more. And let's build, um, we, we've got a header. So let's build a header region, for instance. Uh, we might need that padding right throughout. So we'll go const header is equal to a new container. We decide how big that's going to be. Same, I don't know, 600 by um, 100. And uh, there we go. And we dot. At this point, um, we would do what we did. Remember when we had divs in HTML and you just say, hey, let's throw everything in a div. And it goes div, 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 div. We just add it and then we style it after. That's sort of what we're, we're getting at here. We can just add to. And then the layout class is going to pick this up and put it wherever it needs to be. Same with, same with here as well, add to. The only thing is uh, we want to build this sort of one bit at a time so we can see it. So I'm going to comment out this stuff for now. Comment uh, all that stuff. And just we'll work on the header for a bit. Just add it to the top corner. And in the header, why don't we put... Um, I do want to show you some different components. So how about an indicator? I mean, nobody really puts an indicator in a header unless it's a, oh, a marquee. We do have what's called uh, the Zim, is it marquee? We got a new component coming that is like the pages, but with um, little dots and indicator next to it. But we already have, well, let me just see if I can find it here in the docs for you guys. So I'm looking up the docs. Whoa, which way am I scrolling here? Raga, raga. And let's see, indicator, that's the thing that I was going to do. Selector, dial, tabs, radial, rim, marquee. Yeah, so there it is. And a marquee does kind of like um, a rotating ads. And it's got an indicator down the left hand side. 
So we've already got a marquee, uh, but somebody came along and asked for a marquee and, and sort of made it themselves. And it uh, was a little bit different than what we did. But this was on the, let's see if I can find it and get the idea. Mm, home. I am frozen in my Google. And then under examples. Um, Sarah, let's just do a search. Marquee. M A R. It's in marquee. There it is. Okay. So this is it right here where it's telling us we can drag the picture. Oh, okay. And find out more. Oh, what's going on here? All right. So the next one down here is uh, an animation, a Zim intro with a go. And then the next one down, so you can pick on these, was uh, these are interactive ads. M-I-S-S. -S. Remember this one? This one is a scrambler. Oh, press for excitement. So the Zim missions. Here's the next one where you pick this thing up and drag along and it, it uh, you know, solves it. So this is how we did the indicator. Uh, the, the woman who built us a new marquee put the indicator along the bottom and just swipe between pages. And it was like, yeah, okay, I guess it's sort of the same thing though. All right, and great news, our comic, blah, blah, blah. There's a Zim Shim, oh, a Zim Shim ad. What do you know? Look at that. Look at all that beautiful stuff going on in the ad itself for Adobe Animate. And this was a code in five minutes ad. And here, wow, those are lists. Those are actual lists. And if I click on them, it goes there. Wow, you know, isn't that neat? And there's an ad for Zim Retina. So along with a play and a pause, but that's a marquee. So we could put a marquee up there, but obviously uh, putting this marquee up there, we have to prepare all of the ads that would go into that, okay? So we don't wanna go through all that, but what we'll do is we'll show you an indicator up there. Did we do an indicator before? I think we might have. We could do, instead of an indicator, how about a selector? Because I think I already showed you an indicator. I'm trying to show you different things. So how about um, new selector? I can't remember what a default selector looks like. It, it handles a tile usually, but why don't we dot uh, center it into the header? And we'll have a look. Oh, darn. I was hoping that it would be I was hoping that it would be, um, looks like it's even bigger than that. It's just a big, a big long tile. So that means we have to figure out how to put in a tile, new tile. <clears throat> ah, how about a new circle? Looks like those were little red ones, maybe 20 and red. And so once we've got our circle, we would then say, give me 20 of them by one with a little bit of spacing in there. How about 10 spacing? Okay, and tile that and see how it looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good. When you say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So <clears throat> not quite. So it looks like it's too wide to fit in the size that we told it here. So let's not do 20, let's just do 10 of them. And we're coming closer, but there's, oh, I see. We want some padding on that. So maybe, I think it pads it based on this, which is right here. So if we go 20 and 20, and uh, let's call that eight, and control enter. What is it doing? It's now, oh, I just increased the padding. Yeah, there's the nice selector padding, but now I got a bit too much on, on that selector. Mm, we'll go 10, 10. And hopefully that all fits. Yeah. Okay. So that fits pretty nicely now. Cool, huh? What's nice about a selector though, is it can actually go in a grid as well, much like your television letters or whatever. So there's our selector. We should randomize those colors though. This is almost like a summary of Zim stuff, isn't it? Uh, red, green, and blue. This is our RGB. Um, so now we get a selector of those colors. And what we can do is when we go to one, we can get the color. 
All right, and we'll, we'll make something change based on that color. I'm now using the arrows to uh, go between the selector, or you can press like so to select. Okay, so there's our selector that will be up in our header. That's great. Uh, why don't we? Do you want to try it? Uh, add an event to that selector? Uh, dot change. So we're, we'll do a change event on that. And we may as well give this a name then. Const selector is equal to. And when we change, we could use e.target because e.target would be the selector. But uh, sometimes it's easier to just read this selector about our frame dot color equals selector dot color. Um, no, selector dot uh, current. It's not current value, I don't think. Uh, let's. Let's go take a look under the docs here. So docs selector. And methods properties. Selected index current item. Okay, gets or sets the current item under the selector. That will be our circle and then we can ask for the circles color. So current item dot color that's going to be quite bright i guess stage dot update that's my guess is it's going to be quite bright uh not only that but all of a sudden the greens are gone <laughs> i can't see them anymore <laughs> it's like argh. so uh, how about dot two or a uh, lighten uh, 0.5. Let's see how that works. So we're taking the color and we're lightening the version of the color. That's uh, really, really ugly. Why don't we darken it? Darken. I think I'd like that selector on dark. I'm not sure about the tile and all the rest of the stuff. And we want to start on dark too. Anyway, we're not on dark. So now, ooh, isn't that pretty? That's a little bit prettier. Okay, so that's what we got in the header is a selector um, that's like that. I, I didn't show you the, the picker. The picker is one of the best components. It picks through numbers and it also picks through strings like a list of, of words. So it's almost like a pull down menu, but all built in one with some little arrows and it's quite handy. Anyway, there, there we've got a selector. It's in the header. And now what we're going to do is comment this stuff out. And pop on down to underneath here. May as well be underneath. And call it const footer. Did you guess that one? It's equal to a new container. And spell it right and give this a dimension two. So what, what should we put in the footer? Let's see. We have a D-pad. We have a radial menu and a keyboard color picker. Okay, got a whole bunch of things we could put in there. Uh, okay, so let's make it kind of um, something like, I don't know, 900 or 800, nah, 900 by 300. And that's it. And we'll dot add two. Oh, one way to see that, the size of that, without having to put in a background rectangle like we had done. By the way, that background rectangle should really come out. There it is right there. Okay, so I just remove the background rectangle out of our content area, because we're gonna do that with our layout stuff. Anyway, add two. Another way to do that is go dot outline. And that way you can see at least how big, that's how big the footer is and the proportion of it. Well, that's the, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was on a different screen. This is how big 
or the proportion of it, it will be scaled to fit in however we want with the layout class. But in general, I'm thinking if we got a D-pad, we got a color picker, and we've got a radial menu. Radial menu is really going to suck in here because it gets bigger, and so that's not necessarily the best. Let me just show you a radial menu just so you know what that looks like, and, and then we'll get rid of it. Uh, I guess you have to handle that carefully. Usually a radial menu acts as a pop-up in the middle. Uh, we do have a radial menu that can act on a certain angle, like only 45 degrees, and then expand out from the bottom corner. So that'd be kind of cool. But uh, in general, the radial menu, we would probably pop up over top of stuff, use it, and close it once we're done. Uh, so anyway, that looks like this new radial menu. I don't know what the default one will look like. We'll dot... Uh, Okay, well, we'll center it on the footer. And then we would get this. So there's the radial menu. We're already <laughs> we're already running out of spot on that, but you get you get the idea. Isn't that cool? And, and close the radial menu, but let's uh, get rid of that. Goodbye, radial menu. However, a D-pad, const D-pad is equal to a new D, capital letter, capital P, capital A, capital D, round brackets. Go back and fix that to a capital. So there's a D-pad, and we'll dot pose this. Hmm, how about 100, comma, 0, from the left, oh, with a comma, from the left and from the center. So you see what we've done there? 100 from the left of the footer, 0 from the center of the footer, like that. Although, if we have a bunch of components in the bottom, it would be easier to, rather than try and position them and stuff, it would be better to tile them and just center the tile in there. There's a D-pad. We can't really tell what it's doing, but it will give us results and allow us to move things around. So say we wanted to just put our thumb on that on a mobile app and, and just move the thumb back and forth like this, things would then move based on this D-pad. Okay, it's like, uh, yeah. And, and you could put another D-pad right here for the right, imagine little quadcopter controls or something like that. You can say to the D-pad, you're the horizontal one. So we could do that in here. I think it's probably something like vertical colon false maybe. Uh, no, I think it's type or direction. Direction. Vertical. Okay, let's see if that works. No. Okay, so you know what that means, don't you? We go to the docs. So this is on the Zim site. Go to the docs. Type in D-pad axis. Okay. All right. So axis, default all. That's capital letter all. Two can happen, horizontal and vertical. Uh, I should probably change that in the docs to be our big constants. Axis, vertical. And the other D-pad, we'll copy this. Hello out there. <laughs> D-pad. Two D pad one. Uh, new D pad access. Oh, I'm kind of thinking the horizontal should come first. Horizontal. And this one will make it from the right. Hey. Okay, so now we've got the lefting and the writing. If this ends up getting shrunk, which it will, this, this footer is pretty big right now. If it's down here at the bottom and we're shrinking it, then these might end up being shrunk as well. It looks like we could make them, uh, you know, a bit tighter in here, right? And so let's, uh, let's change this to padding. Adam, I could change it in both places. <laughs> Mistype it in both places. So padding. And zero is great, but this thing's too high. Or we can make the D-pads bigger, but probably easier just to make that. Okay, so that's that's a little bit tighter. We could even tighten that a little bit more, I expect. So what it's really is, this should be the height of the D-pad default plus the padding times two sort of thing. 
But what anyway, we're kind of winging it. 180. Good enough. And we have room for something in the middle. We don't know quite what that middle thing is. Let's uh, think about it. Um, we could have a color picker, or uh, have you seen a color picker before? Here's what a color picker looks like. <clears throat> How are you guys doing? This is like a mega tutorial. Where are we sitting on time? One hour! Oh, mega tutorial. We haven't even started the layout yet. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> All right, let's get a color picker in here pretty quickly so we can get to this layout, huh? Uh, so that looks like this. Const CP for color picker equals a new color pick or pickler. <laughs> and we'll dot show. So we have a show and a hide the color picker. And this is the color picker that it gives us by default right there. Okay, so we have alpha, we have color picking like that. We have an okay and a close, which we sort of need to to deal with, but we might want to go with a, just a few colors, in which point you could then um, provide an array of colors. And we've done this so many times in other places, I just don't think it's, we better get to the layout stuff. So you can customize the color picker so that it all of a sudden looks something like this. I'll just show you. Hopefully we can find somewhere on here that has a little uh, color picker down the side. So what was it that would have a little color picker? Let me think. Hmm, I ha had one in mind, but now that I've seen all, oh, this, this one has a little color picker, it looks like. There, okay. There's a little color picker that is very square but often we have little color pickers that are quite round. Oh yeah, the physics, the, the cell phone one. The one that looks like a phone. Hmm. Phone. 3D phone. Oh no, that didn't have it. It was, it was a 3D, so it was zimjazz.com slash three, I think maybe we'll find it. Yeah, okay. So here's the colors vertically this time, but that, that's a color picker with a certain number of colors, whichever ones you want. And then that's making a gold phone. Cool, huh? Whee! And uh, this is Zim Controls controlling 3D stuff. Okay, so that's 3JS in the middle, but there we are changing the color of a 3D model. Here, in this example, it's very close, but I don't think this had the colors. No, it's got an indicator on it. Same kind of deal. That's me. Cool, watch what happens when we flip it. Ah, oh, it's a different picture. No way, isn't that cool? So it's a bunch of pictures of me dancing with a little indicator down below, which allows me to um, rotate the uh, phone like so. Okay, uh, Dr. Abstract Clubbing, all right, yeah. So we could put that in there at the moment. I don't know, we've seen tabs before. Tabs would kind of fit nicely in there. What else would fit in there? The indicator would fit in there. We have a selector up above. Um, I wanted to show you the uh, keyboard, but so you can have a little keyboard thing and then pop up, pop up a keyboard. The keyboard obviously is not that small, but let me just show you the keyboard. So that was the color picker. And then why don't we get on with the layout so you guys can go home. You probably had 10 cookies. Every break we're giving you a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Every break, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, and then a break, 10 cookies. Uh, so the keyboard would look something like const mm, keyboard equals a new keyboard. We'll have to watch our spelling of the keyboard that we put in here now, though, because it goes lowercase on us. And I believe it would be a show as well, not show. So a keyboard really, for, for the keyboard to work, it needs a label. We don't have a label at the moment. So you point the keyboard to a label, and when you press these letters, the label um, changes. <laughs> and then the label also has a little edit, uh, like a cursor in it, you, which you can move around. You can delete letters and stuff. Uh, you got capital letters there. You have numbers there. 
There's many different um, layouts of keyboards as well for different countries. And then you can make it go away. Okay, so that's the Zim keyboard. We probably could have done a tutorial on that, but oh well. <laughs> like I said, second to last tutorial and it's like a catch-all for various components. Okay, well aside from that then, we got nothing in the middle. Oh well, how about a little copyright message? Um, uh, we'll put a Zim icon in there. F dot make icon and we'll dot center it in the footer. There, let's see what that looks like. Nice. Okay, we could make that click. Do you know how to make things click to go through? So let's make that click by saying dot tap. Oh, I may as well put the dot tap at the end. Dot tap. And then inside of here, we have an arrow function. And we say go. So a short little chain, or not chainable, short little go, three letters like zog, but this is go. And then we say, please go to zimjs.com. And we can say in a new window right here. So this would be underscore blank or whatever. Okay. And that's it. So now we sit here. When we go pop like that, it goes to zim. Okay, so that's how you can make anything go to a different web page. Okay, just a tap on it and tell it to go. Great, so here is our footer then with our stuff. Here is our content with its stuff. Here is our header with its stuff. So the plan or the trick is you... Uh, uncomment them where we've added to we've added that we've added this so we uncomment this uncomment no no uncomment and then we got the footer so footer header and sometimes what I do I don't know you don't have to obviously as I indent the stuff so all this stuff is in the content all this stuff is in the footer but you could also put things like slash slash tilde 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 and that's you know one section for the footer one section for the content no no one section for the header no Oh, okay. Got it. Uh, there's also model view controller. You might separate all this out into a different file, uh, etc. So great. There we go. And now we say layout. All right. Uh, new layout. And the layout, let's go have a look at the docs. So over on Zim, we hit docs and we type in layout. So what is the holder? Uh, our layout's just the stage. Then what are the regions? What's the last margin? So we put, uh, we start off with a margin, then we put some content, then we have a margin, some content. There is no last margin. So we had to put the last margin here. Um, a background color in general on the whole thing. Uh, if it's vertical or not, I think that defaults to true. Let's have a look. Vertical default to true, right? So the important part though really is what do these regions look like? And here's where they look like. Uh, this is an example for a vertical region. It's an array of these objects. So the objects are, what is the object? <laughs> Sorry, the object literals right here are what object are we putting in there? So that'll be our header. Uh, that'll be our content, our footer, something like that. And then we've got margins and things that look kind of like styling, right? Aligns and V-aligns, min heights and max heights and stuff, etc. So that's what layout is doing. We su supply it an array of any number of regions. And then there are some slight differences between vertical and horizontal layouts. 
But anyway, we want a vertical layout, so why don't we just copy this thing uh, for time, brevity. And in here we will say the stage is what where this is, because you don't you can lay out based on other things too. And then we will make our array here. And I think I copied an array, so that means I'm gonna need to adjust this slightly. Yeah. Okay, second object, and there's an extra bracket way on the end here. Uh, no no middle gets no min height, whatever. And Let's see, so our object, when I outdent this just for now so we can see it, our object is the header in this one, the content, hey, that's great, and the footer there. So here are the margins. Let's set all the margins to five, 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 five. So that's how much space there is between these things. So that's how much space there is between the top. And these are in percentages, by the way. So 5% of the height. The max width. I don't know what we're going to want for those. There's also min heights and there's a line. I don't think I want no line left. Probably we want center on all of it, which most likely is the default. V align, um, okay, uh, maybe. And then background colors. Ooh, a background color in the footer of red. I doubt it. That, that wouldn't even be a Zim red. But anyway, background color. How about light well tin i don't know let's have a look okay oh uh we've hard coded the height i think this is just kind of like a hodgepodge of different sort of settings so that you can try out different things let's bring them back if we need them but we'll just go with with that so ready uh if we don't have this let's see what it looks like without this first of all we're going to comment this out Control enter and it looks great i mean i really like that <laughs> okay, so there it all is, kind of just hodgepodge there. Uh, we probably don't need the outline on the footer. Okay, but let's bring in the layout now. And control enter. And oh my goodness, look at that. It's all laid out but it doesn't change. So if I refresh here, it's all laid out, but it doesn't change. Um, also, uh, is it, it's vertical. It just, does it go right to the bottom? Is that what it, yeah, yeah. Because our bottom margin is zero. So we forgot to add that bottom margin of 5%. That's why it's anchoring it right onto the bottom of whatever we have this anchored on the bottom. Remember, for vertical, we're, we're dealing more with a layout that we want kind of like this, uh, as opposed to this for vertical. Um, if it's if it's this aspect ratio, we'd want to probably switch over to a horizontal layout, whatever that may be. Maybe we do a, a vertical picker down the left or whatever, selector down the left. I'm not sure this could be in the content area. Uh, okay, hang on, we've got a lot of these things over. History. No wonder we've been here an hour or longer. Well, that's how we all started. Okay, so um, let's get that last margin in there. Was that the next parameter? I think it was. Come back, find some docs. Layout. Holder regions last margin, okay. Yeah, I guess we'll go five. So that's 5% margins across the way. What else did we think we were wanting to adjust there? Um, some colors in there, but anyway, control enter. I can't remember. I thought there was something else we wanted to look at. Oh yeah, the fact that it's not scaling. So that's the main thing is we want to see what this looks like as, as we pinch it. We don't want it to just stay there uh, once. So that means in the, in the resize, we need to um, resize the the layout. So what we often do, we, we can just give it a name here. Const layout is equal to, and then here we say layout.resize. Like so. 
and then you'll see that uh, we're re resizing the layout. Okay, so you see what it's doing? Wow, interesting, huh? So one thing is, I, it looks like this bit's not center aligned. We can't quite tell what's going on here. Uh, why is this space happening in here? Um, okay, but isn't that cool? Uh, we can, it's probably something to do with alignments. What we want to do is check out the boundaries or the, the ba uh, borders. So we want to turn the borders on in layout. And I can't remember how to do that. We're going to go to the docs and just see. Scaling object. So what do we put for that? Is that what it's still called? I thought it was called something else these days. Oh no, show regions right there. Yeah, there it is. So last margin, last margin min one, background color of it all, two, three vertical. So three nulls show regions true. So I think we just go three of these things. One, two, three, or we go to Zim Duo and then we say true for the, uh, yeah, there they are. Okay, now we can see what's happening as we move this about. So it looks like this is the issue. We've got five there, we've got five there, and this is just growing kind of in in here. So we want to deal with that growing by maybe giving it a min height or something like that. So this is what I mean by tricky. Now we sort of start tuning all of this stuff. It's got a min height of 20. Maybe is that the deal? It's, it's like keeping a min height. Uh, yeah, that looks like it might have been something to do with it. Okay, it's so now it's evenly dispersing this, which is fine. We could um, make it so that this is greedy, as in the top and the bottom, try and grow, and it pushes everything into the middle. But assuming that this is okay, that we want this at the, at the top and we want the space to be... Um, distributed there we at this point we would go to the um, developer tools hang on f12 and hit our mobile uh, chucks so we don't want horizontal flip it to vertical so here's our vertical different devices there's a pixel 5 and there's the footer way down there Here's our, our, our center region and there's this stuff. If we want that to be bigger, we can make it we can go make it go right to the edge. Uh, but you know, we're sort of stuck with, with our content being only that much. If we want that up at the top and that at the bottom, then you know, this is what it looks like. They made the phones too too long. <laughs> on iPads, uh, here's what it looks like on an iPad. It looks pretty good on an iPad. But it's okay this way, that, that got too big, we could adjust it, but really, basically, you might wanna to go to a different design or we put a minimum height on this and then it would stay you know, smaller in here. We do want it to reach out though. If, we're, if it's horizontal though, we might want these to come right to the edge and then we're more like talking a horizontal layout rather than a vertical layout because then it starts to space the things out horizontally. So it's been a long, a long lesson, but as you can see, this is pretty groovy, huh? We've got our, our different layouts. If you hit the B key, so that's the bounds key, there it is. We could make this move around. If, you know, we, our value still works. We've got the wrong color font now, and this will link off to Zim. But uh, the B key it will toggle your bounds like that. So B key for toggling bounds. There's our mobile app. All right. Wow. Huh. Huh. That's a long one. Like I said, let's just take one last quick peek at the at the code here in our Adobe Animate just to have a, a quick summary. We went to the full screen by replacing the default frame of the Zim Shim with a full frame. So frame by default is full unless you say it's fit or something else. So this is you might want to start that off darker 
so that now it starts off looking uh, more along the lines of the dark color that we're going to pick. Okay, so refresh there, bounds. Oh, change the font color, obviously. goes off to Zim. Roosh. We didn't make these do anything, but obviously they could have. And then there's our selector changing the colors of the backgrounds. So uh, we were reviewing here. We went full. We built the header. That could be a movie clip of yours. Make sure it has bounds. So to set a movie clip to have bounds. If you zimify it, it'll pick up the nominal bounds on you, but you can pass in bounds as you zimify, or you can do use set bounds after to set bounds, but it should have bounds, your movie clip, that you're using for a top or a left-hand side or whatever it is. Here's some content. We added some content. We saw a list, talked about the list, how to get the value from the list when we changed, yay. We added in a footer, there's the D-pads. Um, they have a change to or, or something. Just take a look at the docs on the events of a D-pad. We've made an icon in there. Then we took those three things and we put them in a layout uh, like that. Tab this. Note that we had to resize this layout. And if we have many pages, which often we do, we'd have many layout objects. So what we did is you can easily make const uh, a layout manager or just a manager manager equals a new manager like that <sighs> can do it can't do it <laughs> a new m -m -m manager or a layout manager uh, in the end we made a manager just manage all the managers and then this layout we can add to the manager so it's like we don't even build it we kind of just go like this manager dot add and in there a new layout and that's the end of the manager so you see that we we just hey let's make a, a layout add it to the manager and then in here we manager dot resize so any layouts we make we just add to the manager and it is the manager that we end up resizing and you get the same thing that we had before where the manager is handling that that layout there's also a grid and a guide. The grids and guides help you figure out what's going on. You can add the grids and guides to the manager. And then the grids and guides also need to be resized. So if you resize the manager, it resizes the grids and the guides. Okay, cool. We are taking a look at it. We're considering just automatically making a manager. So as soon as we make a layout, just know that it needs to be managed and make a manager in behind. If it's a second layout, we'll use the manager that's already made. And when we resize, we'll automatically handle any managers for layouts. So we're heading in that direction. It was so cool to see the efficiencies that we got by adding all these things to managers and add the grids and the guides to the managers and then realized, well, hey, if we just did all that in the background, then you guys wouldn't have to even make a manager. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't even have to think about it. It would just all work. So uh, we'll probably do that for the next version of Zim, which will be Zim version Zim 0.2, I think. Yeah, we're on. We did Zim version Zim 0, 0, 0, 001 we're on right now. So Zim 0.2 will probably be out in a couple of months. I am Dr. Abstract, and this has been uh, quite the um, quite the, the Zim tutorial for Adobe Animate. <laughs> wow. Uh, but we did have some exciting things to look at there with the different, uh, some more advanced components, and there's still more components to look at as well. But we'll let you um, discover those and also the layout class in a full mode. All right. And look forward to our very last tutorial, or at least up to the 30. We're, we're hitting at 30, and we're going to stop for a bit. Our very last tutorial will be quite uh, exciting. Uh, at least it's one of my favorite things to work with. We've already seen it, but we're going to look at it more in depth. And of course, check out the earlier tutorials. 
you have any questions on any of this, contact us at zimjs.com slash discord or zimjs.com slash slack uh, or the Adobe community channels. Take it easy. Bye-bye.